Hello everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today I'd like to go over labeling your medical equipment. We're talking about PM stickers, batteries change stickers, and various other notifications that you gotta put on the device itself. So one of the first things I'd like to talk about is what type of stickers are we gonna use at all? Most places seem to still work with handwritten stickers, which will be either paper or vinyl. And vinyl doesn't work with a lot of ink pens, so oddly enough, a lot of places go to paper. Sometimes, not always, the paper ones will have a plastic slip cover. Now what could possibly go wrong with that? You have an environment where we have highly caustic cleaning solvents. You have things like blood and other liquids that are random, sometimes even radioactive. Why would you ever want to use a paper-backed sticker? It absorbs everything. Believe it or not, if you have a plastic slip cover on it, stuff will seep into the paper underneath. And guess what? You biomeds are the ones that are peeling off those stickers. You probably didn't even realize that there's blood and stuff underneath the slip cover. But it does happen. Basically, vinyl is one of the best things that we can use. And there's different types of vinyl or PVC stickers. Some of them will smear when you clean the equipment, when you wipe it down. And some of them do a better job than that. Uh, some of them will have a plastic slip cover that fits over the vinyl. But there's an even better solution than that. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. The other thing that I want to talk about is whether or not uh, we should use handwritten or printed. Now, any of you that has walked up to a piece of equipment and tried to read who the previous technician was, when they did it, We've all been there. We've all been super upset because it's illegible or the solvent has gotten in there and smeared the ink so you no longer can read it. So obviously printed is your best option. There's a solution for that. Now let's talk about what data we put on the stickers. So let's start with battery change stickers. When doing a battery change sticker, only put the date that the battery was changed. If you put the date that is due, then we don't know the interval. By doing only the date that you installed the battery, if you're starting to notice a trend of defective batteries or poor user maintenance of those batteries, like maybe not leaving the equipment plugged in, then you're going to have to change those batteries more often. And if technicians see a date due and it's not to that date yet, they're generally not going to change the battery, even though user abuse has required an early change. It happens. It happens often, actually. So with battery change stickers, I recommend only putting the date that the battery was changed. PM due. Now this is one that a lot of people are gonna disagree with me on, and that's fine. I mean, it's your shop, do whatever you wanna do. But for a PM due sticker, on my labels, I, I generally will just have PM due, the due date. Not the, not the date that it was done, the date that it's due. The reason being is if the intervals on that piece of equipment change, or let's say, let's say it's a six month and you put it as a 12 month, and somebody that's inspecting you, they know that. It's rare, but it could happen. You could be written up for that. And I'm not saying extend your PM dates by any means. I'm saying minimize your risk. See, your work orders are your Bible, and your work orders tell the whole story. Your sticker, it's just there for the users and for yourself and for when somebody's inspecting really quick to just verify that you've been doing your job. Stickers are not meant to tell the whole story. And that brings me to the next part, calibration results on stickers. I know some of y'all do it and I discourage it highly because writing is illegible. Nobody's gonna read all those fine little fine print numbers and is it really required? Now here's where we need to open up a dialogue as a career field. Is it required to have your calibration results on a sticker on the outside of the equipment? Because let's say those calibration results are different than what you see on the work order. All it takes is one or two numbers to be different. Maybe you fat fingered it and you swapped them. It could happen. It, of course it could happen. If you have data in two places, and that data is different between those two places, and you are under investigation for whatever, patient died, it wasn't your fault, but let's say the data is different. Now the integrity of your entire program is at risk. 
the work order is the Bible, which means whatever's in the work order, that is gospel. And everything else is just hearsay. So what I'd like to talk about as a career field, is it really required to have all the information written on the stickers? And I'm talking about your ESUs, you have your defibrillators, you have a couple other devices out there like temperature, well they'll write the temperature and stuff. Is it really required to have all that data written on a sticker? Or would just a simple PM due date suffice? If anybody wants the service history on a piece of equipment, they can and will pull the work order anyway. And with that being said, if they're going to pull the work order, shouldn't that be where all the data is recorded, not on some stupid sticker that could fall off, get wiped away or whatever? So I'd like to talk about that. Like, what, what do you guys do on your stickers? Do you guys write all that stuff out? I'm just curious. So lastly, I'd like to talk about the best solution that I found for labeling your equipment. And I'll give a shout out to the, the guys over at Medical University of South Carolina. They had an excellent idea, and when I came and worked for them, they had an industrial label printer that printed out all their PM stickers. And what they would do is, based on the year, they would change out the colors. One year it might be blue with black ink, one year it might be yellow with blue ink, the next year it could be pink with black ink, but every year they change the sticker. So when you walk in a room, you can instantly see what's due and what's not based on the colors. What they're using is an industrial printer. Mind you guys, I'm not endorsing any particular company or product. I'm just telling you guys what this hospital is using and it worked very, very well. They're using a graphics products industrial label printer. And yes, you can see that that price tag right there it's $1,795. Yes, it's kind of expensive. I get that. And it can be ridiculously so. Also, you're going to have to buy ink and the vinyl. But you guys should notice that when you buy your new stickers for every single year, those stickers are very expensive to have custom-made stickers. And especially the custom-made stickers that are made correctly which are your vinyl stickers with a vinyl slip cover or a clear plastic slip cover. So in order to get the correct stickers for a medical environment, they're going to be extremely expensive anyway. These stickers do not require a plastic slip cover. They work extremely well. Since they're designed for use in an industrial environment, you can wipe them down as much as you want. They will adhere to the surface of the equipment. It doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth surface either. It just sticks because they're intended for an industrial environment. But one of the biggest advantages to these stickers is you are not stuck to just one format. Let's say that you have a device that has both a batteries changed and a PM due. You can print one of each sticker in rapid succession. Just print this one, now print that one. Then you have two stickers, you slap them on the outside of your equipment and you press on for the next device. You don't have to have a huge roll of stickers for each type of sticker you're going to use. And there's no handwriting, so it's legible every single time. And with this being a thermal printer, you don't have to worry about the ink wiping away. It's a permanent solution, guys. So one of the things we also used to do with these things is we would have the hospital logo, and then underneath that we would have the biomed telephone number, and it's all printed on the sticker. So if somebody walks up and sees that the PM is out of date, there's your telephone number right there. So they call them up and they're like, hey man, I got this down in my office. It says it's due. Can y'all come down and check it out? So that's just my suggestion, guys. Get yourself an industrial printer with vinyl stickers. It seems to work perfectly and it's a huge cost saving measure, to be honest. We were able to buy just X amount of rolls. Once you go through your sticker material, all you gotta do is buy a couple more rolls and you're good. You don't have to buy 10,000 more stickers in order to do a production run which is going to save you money because you're not going to use all those stickers. So that's what I got for you guys. It's open for discussion. That's just my opinions on stickers and how to label your equipment. This is something that everybody seems to do differently. And I wish as a career field that we could get more on board and do it correctly because the hospital that I'm currently working at, I'll tell you right now, we use hand signed paperback stickers and then you got to put a plastic slip cover, which is a whole separate roll of consumables that I have to take with me when we go out and do PS. 
That is such an old school way of doing business and there are better ways of doing it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. We're trying to grow this channel and we're going to do things a little bit better.